we, we, said, in, we said that there's an advantage <coughs> of the Nisham investing in its garments in order to connect to the Torah and mitzvahs, which the Nisham on its own cannot connect to the Torah. Mitzvahs only when invested in its garments. And what's the advantage of the Nisham to do so? Because only, in other words, what's the advantage of the Nisham or let's say, let's say it differently. The advantage of the neshama to invest in its garments because only via its garments it's going to connect the Torah mitzvah. The neshama on its own cannot connect the Torah mitzvah. What's so special of connecting to Torah mitzvah? What's wrong with that beautiful experience of the neshama on its own? Because Hashem placed Himself, where's godliness manifest? And where's the essence of God manifest? Is in Torah. Hashem placed Himself in the Torah and the mitzvah. So it's worthwhile to the neshama to descend in its thought, speech, and action in order to connect to Teta Mitzvahs, which Teta Mitzvahs are the essence of God. So now we ask the question, is Teta Mitzvahs the essence of God? When you open up a Mishnah, you understand what the Mishnah says. You open up a, 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 a Gemara, you understand what the Gemara says. You start to think about a God. Could any human mind understand God? It says, you can't understand God. So, how could you say the essence of God is in the Mishnah? The Mishnah can understand, and God I can't. So if you're going to say it's just like a ray of God, okay, God himself is transcendent, you can't understand him, but the ray, just that kind of the next generation is in the Mishnah, so that's why I can understand the Mishnah. Yeah, make that make sense? But if you say Hashem put his whole essence in the Mishnah, so if you want to break it down, Hashem, I can't understand, how come I can understand the Mishnah? So there are actually certain mitzvahs, interestingly, which resemble this notion of being connected to or being part of the essence of Hashem, for example, right? This is last week's Pasha says, Chuk as a part of this, it's called Chukim. Chukim means you can't understand them. Go try. It says, You have no permission even to try to find the reasons of the Chukim. Ah, that's, that, that, that's making sense. That it's a mitzvah which resembles what the mitzvahs are all, are all about. Because I can't understand God, I can't understand this mitzvah. What about the other mitzvahs? Mitzvahs which we can relate to. Hashem says, keep the Shabbos because I rest. You see, there's a, there's a touch of rationale in that mitzvah. Or mitzvahs which are mishpatim, clear, do not steal, do not kill. I can understand, right, because it's even part of society. The constitution of any normal society is not to do all these things, which means it, 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 there is such a clear understanding not to do these mitzvahs or to be kinder to other parents and so on. These things would make sense. And you say the same God, which is transcended and inexplicable God, are in those mitzvahs as well, in the same way. So how did that work? And then again, the, like the example we gave before, there's a Mishnah, there's a Gemara. Hashem says, we could open the Mishnah, we can understand what the Mishnah says. So we say that Hashem, as the essence of Hashem, which is inexplicable, is in the Mishnah, which is so explicable. And, 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 and then someone's going to say, okay, who says you understand the Mishnah? And someone's going to maybe be more pious, is going to say, you are understanding the Mishnah. I mean, a better Jew, because I know God's essence in the Mishnah. And Hashem's essence you can't understand. I'm going to open the Mishnah. I'm going to say, God, I believe your Mishnah. I'm not going to try to understand it. That's a, that's a sin. It means that's just the opposite of learning Torah. Learning Torah has to be with one seichel. And Torah itself call, is called Chochmaschem or Binaschem. You have to understand Torah to Mikai Mitzvah Torah. So if it's not only we can also understand Torah. The real Mitzvah of Limitat Torah is when you understand it. Not when you don't understand it. That's the real Mitzvah of learning Torah. So how could you say the essence of God, which is transcendent of Seichel, is in that Gemara? So he says, the truth is, it doesn't make sense. But it says, this is part of Hashem's great Anova, His, his humbleness, His humiliation. Humiliation is maybe his, his, his consideration. That He wanted to give us a Teira, He decided to take His whole essence and throw it down this long, this, this steep mountain and it should roll and roll till it comes to the world of Seichel, till it comes to the world of Midas, till it comes to the world of action, till it comes to the world of speech. And, he, and, 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 and there was no end to, to where the gift of Teh, that's why it's called Matona, it's a gift because Hashem, through this, this, this energy of His essence, or put his place His essence, all the way into the smallest intricate details of Torah, even where there is seichel, even there where is there is feelings, even there where there is action, even there is speech. I make a bracha. It seems to be so external. Hashem pushed himself so far that not only with my superior qualities can I grasp him, but even things which are way lower than my superior qualities, my speech, my action, my feelings. Okay, feelings are deeper, but in, even there a place where intellect and feelings and and do exist 
and things which are much more inferior, like we just inferior, like we just said, speech, action, Hashem threw his all lessons all the way there. And in every part of Taita. And if you open up the Rebbe even says even to the twenty into the twenty fourth Svarim, you learn a story of Shmuel Novi that he went uh, that Shol went to find his uh, his, uh, his ox and they were like he went to get Novi. To, and you think it's a story. Hashem's essence is in there. In other words, the kindness you see over here. You want to know the Abraham's greatness? He says, this is you find Abraham's greatness where you find Abraham's kindness. Where they find Abraham's allowing himself to lower himself, to to throw to roll, so to say, or to throw his whole entire essence in the most farthest place which seemed to be so far from God himself, or within man to be such, such inferior expressions of, 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 of our of our kochot, of our talents, and so on, like speech, action, an animal can move a, beha- an animal can move a table, for example. What are you doing, taking a little, little of an essay? And you can say, well, a little of an essay, am I, am I clicking to the divine? Am I touching the divine with a little of an essay? The answer is yes, because Hashem threw himself all the way down even to the uh, to the world of action. Not only to where, my, where my intellect, again, uh, plays, uh, plays a role. And he says more so into the, into the diay, into the ink which is written on a safer. When every safer which is written with parchment, or with paper for that matter, he says parchment, parchment and ink, which is also the physical. When it has the combination of these words, which are, which are part of the 24 svarim of Teira, and on that parchment, that parchment becomes Teira, and that's where Hashem's essence is. And, and he says not only that, not only the parchment of the four twenty-four Sfarim, if it's a Gemara, if it's a Medrash, if it's a Teisvis, as long as it becomes part of Teira, Hashem's essence is there. Tanya, Shulchan Aruch. And we say a Medrash, we spoke about last week, I can't learn a Gemara, he could just read the, my little Medrash says. Hashem, he pushed himself. Not only in the more sophisticated parts of Teira, he reads the story of a Medrash, Hashem through pushed himself even to the story part of the Medrash. You read a story of the Medrash. It's a story. It's motivating. But is God's essence there? That's part of God's kindness. He didn't stop for no and no. He didn't stop for no in no, in no area that you say, that's it. He let it go all the way. Now, in, in Al-Tarebbe, and I'm using these terms also because al says, this is for this very reason, Tate is compared to water. Tate is compared to water. Why is Tater compared to water? Well, there's many things given, right? The guy walks into a medrash after a whole day. He feels like he just drank a, like a tired person drinking a cup of water. He sits down with the Gemara. Ah, this is Gishmak, right? There's many, many reasons why Tater is compared to water. It's our chayis. It's our life. And water is our oxygen. Water is, uh, is so uh, crucial to the person's um, life and so on. But al is the reason, the reason why Tater is compared to water is because there's nothing else which rushes down downwards, everything gravitates downwards, but nothing else rushes downwards like water. And we give the example last week, take a chunk of sand, put it on this table. A lot of it will fall, a little bit will fall on the sides, but the chunk will still stay on the table. Take the same amount of water and put it on the table, all over the place. And every small perforation in the ground, the water is going to rush in there. And sometimes you something spills, you don't even know where to go because it just goes to all sides. That's the nature of water. And that's what that's what Taylor is called water because they didn't stop <coughs> more sophisticated parts, sophisticated parts of Taylor, sophisticated parts of the human being. He let it go to the lowest of the lowest level. And another <coughs> thing which we pointed out, why is Taylor compared to water in the same in the same context? Because when you look at water, the same water would began on high is the same water would came down low. There's no difference in the quality of water, right? When you look at the sun, for example, just the gas of the sun. Sun itself, the ballas of the sun itself. It's a, it, 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 it's something which no one could stand around. Nothing could stand. There. Everything's consumed into the hot, the heat of those of the, of the sun. There's no question. As the ray evolves from the sun and it gets lower and lower, eventually we could appreciate the warmth, the light of the sun. But it's already second generation, inevi- ine- inevit- inevitably. When you look at water, whatever is up there and it rushes down, it's exactly the same quality of water. There's no difference of the quality. That's why Tate is compared to water, because it's not when Hashem, you know, there's the essence of God, and it just came in the end, but we're already second, third, fourth, fifth, or fiftieth generation. You know, a little Kedusha, there's the divinity there. There is a little sacred, it's, 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 it's sacred, but it's, is, is, it, is, it, is it the whole, is it the, is, it the, is it the essence of God? The answer is yes, because that's why, in this, for this very reason, Tate is compared to water, for these two aspects of Tate. The firstly, it rushes to the, the lowest of the low, 
And this, again, Hashem took His essence and made sure that it comes into every single part of the Torah, its reality, and every single part within man which com completes the Torah. Again, even if it's the speech which is inferior than thought, and even if it's action. And more than that, Torah is compared to water because that's what water will place. It's the same quality of water where, it's, where, where it began on high to where it ends up at low. Hashem's essence is here in that mission, in that message. So. That's where we learned till we are going to start where by that page which we said Ume Akhar. Ume Akhar, right? We have that. Shatayra mitzvah malbishim kolas b'chinas hanefesh. So again, and for this very reason, to recap, to culminate that um, the, 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 the flow or what the Galtreb is trying to tell us, for that very reason, the Neshama. It is, it is an interest, I say it's an interest of the neshama to descend in its garments, but it's, it's truly one neshama which has garments, but we're using these terms to understand the virtue of the garments of the neshama over the, the neshama itself. Right? We said, we said the other day that, that man's garments don't have real virtue over himself, usually. Right? A person could be healthy without gar garments, healthy and could eat, but nonetheless, in the way the world is set up, you cannot interact with the outside without garments. So garments seem so external, right? Material and this, it doesn't even hurt if you cut, cut someone's garment. Cut cuts from a finger, it hurts. It's, 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 there's no comparison to the person's body and his garments. But we can still understand, not, not, but in Shem it's so much more, because this is real. But we can understand, because just the fact that the world is, is made up in such a way that Garments contributes to one man to one man's well well being, because you interact with garments, you present yourself with garments. You 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 garments do something to the person. Again, as we mentioned, his esteem, his glory. He's dressed well and he feels good about himself because of his garments. You see, it does contribute. This thing. even in the in, in the world reality, we could see how garments how they're not only inferior to man. There there's no comparison. Man is the the, the main thing. Garments is just something which comes and goes. But you see, garments ultimately can contribute. People interact with their garments, and they go make business with the garments, and and they and they and they make themselves money, and they they the social interaction. Everything is a person has to wear. That's the way the world set up. So you see, the garments, which are no comparison to the person himself, it still contributes to the person. So we could use that just to understand. But here, this is for real. I mean, when I say for real, it's only to the garments that the person can connect with Taylor Mitzvahs. Without the garments, it's all spiritual and pleasurable and so on and so forth. But it's, it, is it? But but it, there's there's no tater mitzvah involved. So the person puts on his garments of thought, speech, and action in order to connect tater mitzvah because that's the way the nefesh itself is going to connect to <coughs> the essence of God, which exists precisely where in the tater mitzvah, in the lul of an in the mission, and the gemara, and so on. So now we go on. Is the because the tater mitzvah is in clothes. All the all the ten levels of the nefesh. Remember, the ten levels were the intellectual dimension, which is chachmah and the seven emotional faculties of the neshama. And again, the netanim is enclose everything. Over the entire through 613 limbs of the neshama mereshav adraglo from head to, to, to foot. Hariklulo, the entire neshama is tzurura, but it's via teirah mitzvah, via its garments. It's all tzurura, but it's a chayim, it's a shamamish. It's all tied down with the knot of life. Hashem himself. And the eir Hashem mamish makifo, malbisho mereshav adraglo. And the light of Hashem through its garments, which again connect to Tehidah Mitzvahs, the light of Hashem Mamesh encompasses the soul and encloses the soul from head to toe. From head to foot, to be exact. Like it says, the Pasuk, Tzuri Hashem is my rock, I find comfort or I find shield and, and in, 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 in within Hashem. Which means, I find myself within the Hashem Himself. Which means Hashem surrounds us, the godly reality, which is, exists in Teir and Mitzvah, which the person invests in through his connection, again, to through, through his investment in his garments, in his thought, speech, and action. Which that's, that is what connects to Teir and Mitzvah. So it encompasses the entire soul. So the person, he's completely within Hashem. How lucky we are. We have the ability via, and again, this is only via the garments, but the person could be within Hashem, that everything about the neshama is enclosed within Hashem. 
וכסיב קצינו, רוצין תתרנו. קצינו זה גאלס, זה שילד. סורי זה רוק, מי רוק, מי סטרנט. קצינו זה שילד. רוצין, מה זה רוצין? רוצין means there is will of Hashem. תתרנו, crowns, means they completely surrounds the entire nation. And what רוצין are we talking about? שהוא רוצין נוי וחכמה סייז ברוך את השם is will, and שם is wisdom, and לבשם את תרם תסל, which is invested in the תרם and its mitzvahs. Clear? Yeah? Now we can understand what the Mishnah says. And there's a very interesting Mishnah. If he's looking at the same Mishnah, it says, the Mishnah says, you're looking for pleasure? One moment in the world to come is much greater. and It's much more pleasurable and probably infinitely more pleasurable than the entire pleasures of this world. And as we said, you said the other day, there's, even a person has all, he has, he has all what he needs in this world. And without any bumps in his life, which is almost impossible, we hope it'll happen one day, right? But he, everything, all he has access to all pleasures and all delicacies and delights in this reality, in this world. And he gets involved with them, and he, and, and, right? Obviously, we're not talking about someone who should or shouldn't. We're talking about, in theory, someone which can think that he could find all the pleasures in life in this physical world, and let's say he has access to them, doesn't come, then he could live 120 years, a thousand years, doesn't come to one moment in the world, pleasure of the world to come. But the same Mishnah says, the same Mishnah says, but one moment of tshuva, maizim tev, and repentance and good deeds in this physical world is greater than the whole entire Olam Abba. And Olam Abba is not for a hundred years, hundred twenty years, Olam Abba is, is infinite amount of years. How does that work? How does that work? That seems to be contradicting. But if you dissect these two statements, you realize it's not contradicting at all. Would you repeat that one, one uh, something about tshuva? One moment of tshuva, of repentance, and good deeds of Torah mitzvahs in this physical world is greater than the entire world to come. Mm-hmm. Right? It seems to contradict the other statement. But the 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 and the, the it, but if, again, if you thread, if you take apart this statement, these two parts of the mission, you see that's not a contradiction because when you're talking about pleasure. There's no, no, there's no comparison. The pleasure in the world to come, a world which is divested of any reality, the confinement of this physical, um, this physical reality, which is by definition limited and finite and so on, <clears throat> as opposed to the world to come doesn't have this finitude, notion of finitude, which this world does by definition inevitably have. So obviously the, the, the godly pleasure or the, uh, the pleasure for the neshama is infinitely greater. The entire world, one moment, not 50 years in Ganeiden, one moment in Ganeiden is much greater than the, the entire world. The entire, all the pleasures and delicacies a person could suck out of this world, if you want to say. I mean, really, we're not talking about somebody who just theoretically, he decides, he, he, he knows what the pleasures of the world is all about, but one moment, a split second, in the world to come. Because there's no erich, there's no comparison, this is just the lowest. It says that the pleasures of this world is the sediments, where does the pleasure of this world? It didn't pop out of nowhere. It, it all, everything evolves from on high. So this is like the sediments, right? You take a bottle of wine, and you see a bunch of sediments sitting in the, in the bottle. You give back the bottle, would you rip me off, right? This is like, this is like the, 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 the no good. You want a crystal good, clear bottle of wine, you, because you know that that's, that's that, 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 you don't want, you don't want to see the sediments. It says all this, the, the pleasures of this world is just the shmari eifan and the sediments which fell down. And this is, and this, so this is just, this is by definition inferior or, 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 or much less, infinitely less pleasurable than the pleasures of the world to come. That's where the real tainuk is because that's closer to the tainuk, the essence of Hashem, or, or, or closer to the, to, 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 to God. <coughs> Torah mitzvahs are not where the pleasure is. Torah mitzvahs is where the essence of God is. Maybe in the future, Mashiach will come, we'll see, we'll, we'll be able to feel and appreciate the pleasure which is the pleasure which is in the Torah mitzvahs because ultimately it's the essence. But when you're dealing with the essence of God, it's not a matter of pleasure. It's just God Himself. Period. Pleasure, not pleasure, it's God Himself. So the Mishnah says, if you're looking for God Himself, one moment of Tshuva Ma'asim Tevin Al Mazeh is greater than the whole entire Elam Abba. And he says, Elam Abba it works in both ways. The reason why they're having pleasure is only because it is no essence, right? You can someone's gonna take a barrel of water, you're thirsty, throw it over you. It's too much. It's overwhelming. In order that you should appreciate the cup of water, you have to confine. In other words, you have to limit the amount of water and how much you're gonna put in. How much you're gonna put in the cup has to be limited, and then you're gonna drink it. You'll have pleasure of it. 
But if you want water, you have pleasure of water, so let me just throw the whole barrel on you. Throw you into the water. No, I won't have no pleasure. It's too much. It's overwhelming. Because, in other words, the real reason why in Elam Abba they have pleasure is because they do not have the essence. That's why you can have pleasure of God. And that's why, we're going to read inside, the, what's the expression of the Mishnah? Nenin miziva shechina. What do they have pleasure from? Not the essence, the Shekhinah itself. Ziv, what does Ziv mean? The ray of the Shekhinah. That's what they have the pleasure from. Ah, why so? Because it goes together. You can only have pleasure with something which is, which is attainable to you. So what do they have pleasure? Because they only have the Ziv HaShekhinah, just the ray of the Shekhinah. That's why they can have pleasure. The Shekhinah itself, it's too high to have pleasure. But that's where it's, it's in the little Vanessa. It's very pleasurable to shake in the little Vanessa. It's not. You can feel the excitement, it's a mitzvah. Or knowing that you're connecting yourself to the essence of God is already puts it in the right perspective that you should be excited. But to say that it's like it's like it's, it's mamish pleasure for a great tzaddik, maybe he sees a little more. But it, in this case, we're not looking for the pleasure because we're looking for God Himself. And if it's God Himself, maybe it's too strong and too powerful that it should be pleasurable to us. That's what he says. Just the ray of the shechina. It's a pleasure. It's a per- perceiving God. And what any creature, even superior creatures, superior, superior created entities, could not perceive only ha'orim. Hashem only a a ha'orim, which means an offspring, a ray of the light of Hashem. The ray of the Shechina. Aval Kodesh Baruch Hu B'chavay Deva Atzmei, the Eibish does essence. Less Nachshav and Fisa B'Klal. Ganeidin, there is no Nachshav that could say, ah, sitting Ganeidin, and it's benefiting from the essence of God. No. No such a thing that a Neshama or any level of any being, even the Supreme Being, could ever have any understanding and knowledge in the essence of Hashem. We can't. But interesting, and ironically, Ki'im, Kashat Fisa, Mislav Eshav Eterim, it's a Yopun Gimara. Yes, that's where you have the expression. You hold the little of an essay, that's where you have the expression. Azai, tfisa, ben, that's it. When you try to figure it out intellectually, to try to figure out the right pleasures of it, no, it's impossible. We can never understand God, period. The ray of God, we can appreciate. That's why the Nishamas appreciate that they have so much pleasure in their name. But you want the essence of God, you can never have it. You can never appreciate it, you can never understand it. You can mean tofes. Where is it? In the, in the mission, in the Gemara, and in the in, in the in the little Vanessa, where's really the examples we're giving? Um, mislabeshes by Kodesh Baruch Hu, Mamash that I said, Kodesh Baruch Hu, Kadis invest in the Eibush himself because Torah and God are truly one. Right? Um, yeah. Let's see. We have another two minutes over here. Let's see. But after Torah and Slabshu Bidvarim Tachtenim Gashmim. But after all, someone's going to say, "You've got to be kidding." The Gan Eden with the Neshamas are completely divested from any physical reality and they're totally involved in the spiritual light and ray of Hashem. That's not it. But I'm putting on the tefillin, I'm shaking the Lord. It, after all, it, it's physical. I mean, if you told me within this physical world, get up on a mountaintop, you'll have maybe with a little bit of a, of a pondering on the greatness of Hashem, maybe I'll touch the divine. But to, to, to do, take the, something from the physical world, it doesn't resonate right. I, I'm, 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 I'm putting on the physical straps that are made of parchment from an animal. I'm touching, the, I'm connecting myself to the essence of Hashem. Something doesn't make sense just because it has this physical facade and veneer. Comes to the and says, so what if it's physical? It's like somebody coming in and saying, you know what, the king gave me a hug. The king gave you a hug? He says, nah, he gave you a hug in the winter time when he was wearing a sweater. I gave him when I, I, he gave me a hug in the summertime. He was wearing a regular shirt without a sweater. It's a pathetic statement. Because as long as the king is in there, what's the difference if it, he hugged you or you hugged him if he was wearing a sweater or a shirt? <laughs> or a thin shirt. The king is there. So that's all to them says. Don't be concerned that it's invested in the physical. Don't be concerned because the king is there. What's the difference if, it's, if it has a physical veneer and facade or not? There's no difference in the virtuous being, uh, in the virtue of being close and cleaving to the king. <laughs> if you're hugging the king, that he's, he's invested in one garment, or or he has a few garments. The summer, the winter, is there a difference? The king is in those garments. What's the difference if you're hugging him? He's wearing a sweater or a shirt. That's what he says. So therefore, no, nothing to be concerned if Tayyid and Mrs. are invested in the Gashmis. If the Abish is there, he's there. And so too, this is when you're hugging the Abish Hashem. And so too, Hashem 
hugs, hugs the person with his arms. If the king is, or, or before he was talking about the person who's hugging the king, if he's hugging the king, if he's wearing a sweater or a shirt or two garments or one, it's, he's just, regardless, he's hugging the king. And here he says, if the king is hugging him, if the king is in, it doesn't matter if the king is invested, it's rather it's irrelevant if the king is invested in his garments. As long as the king is there and hugging him, it doesn't make, it's, it's, it's completely and totally <coughs> insignificant if he's wearing a garment or not. Like it says, and that's, and that's what Tehrimitz is all about. Like it says, Hashem's right hand does embrace me, which is the Teira. Teira is called, why is he Minay Teira? Because we know Teira was given Mi Min from the right hand of Hashem, which is Chesed Mayim, which is kindness. Again, Hashem exposing himself to him. Mayim, like we said before, Hashem rushing through into the Teira and again into the, into the accessibility of the Yid. So that's called the Yimin, which is associated with Chesed Mayim. And what does it say about this Yimin, which is Teira Mitzvah? Techap Keini hugs and embraces the person which does the Teira Mitzvahs. And who's in that, who, who, and who's in that Teira? Hashem, the essence of Hashem. So it's irrelevant if we access Hashem through the physical mitzvahs.